Hey, Janet here. Welcome to my little home studio. And as I promised, I'm uh, putting together a little series of um, video tutorials on watercolor. So the first one is um, going to be concentrating on how you use your brush to create things like nice lines, thick, thin, certain brush strokes, um, S strokes, comma strokes, just some basic things that you'll need to put together flowers and petals and to create a beautiful bouquet. So that's where we're going to start and then we'll move on from there um, where I'll show you how to create roses and tulips and these are all are going to be very whimsical and loose. So if that's your style, stick with me and I hope you guys enjoy these series of videos. So let's get started. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to start with just a simple activity of just drawing straight lines. So right now I've got a round brush and brushes come in different sizes. The size of your lines or your petals or your flowers will depend on the size of the brush. So the way they're numbered, the bigger the number, the larger the brush, the smaller the number, the smaller the brush. Um, for instance, this is a number six and this is a number five and you can tell that one is smaller than the other. This is a round brush and I'm going to start with a round brush. Um, you can also use a dagger brush. Uh, you can use an angle brush. The technique is just a little bit different. So for now I'll, um, I'm going to start by showing you with a round brush. You're just going to need some water. Just save like an old jelly jar and put water in it. That'll work. And usually I have two containers of water. One to actually wash out the color and then a clear, clean jar of water for when I just want to pick up some water because you don't want to, if you just want to add clear water, you don't want to be dipping into your dirty water to do that. So that's the reason to have two. Um, and when your water starts getting dirty, just go ahead and change it out. Don't continue to use, you know, really dark, dirty water because it'll muddy up your colors a little bit. So I've got my paint here. And you can use any kind of watercolor paint to start out with. When you get, if you get hooked on this and you start getting or thinking you're getting pretty good, you're probably going to want to invest in some better watercolors, um, some tubes like this style. There's lots of different companies, gorgeous, gorgeous colors. But it's perfectly fine to use something like this to get started with. This was like five, six dollars at a local craft store, easily found online. Um, look at all the great colors. This will work beautifully. There's also kits like this. They come in lots of different um, palettes, springtime, darker colors, leaf colors, flower colors. Um, they're really handy. I mean, there's literally hundreds of different kinds of watercolor sets. Watercolor paper, I am going to be using 140 pound cold press paper. Um, it also comes in, sometimes when I'm just practicing, I'll buy 90 pound. Um, it's not as thick as the 140 pound and it's a little bit less expensive usually. So I'll just use that for like lots of little, you know, carefree doodles. But when I want to make sure my work is good enough to be on paper that can be preserved and framed, I usually go for at least a 140 pound cold press paper. I mean, there's a whole, a whole video can be done on paper. So just to keep it simple, 140 pound cold press paper is going to be fine. So I am, and I'm going to be working right to left because with watercolor, it's watercolor. Water is wet. So if I am working this way, I'm going to be dragging my hand uh, through the wet paint. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to start here and work in this direction. If you're left-handed, just go the other direction. So I've got my round brush. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to get it nice and wet and get it good and wet. And don't, you can blot it on your paper towel, but don't, you know, don't do this because then you're taking all the water out of it. So make sure you leave, and you'll know when you don't have enough water, the paint just will not flow from the brush to the paper. It'll look dry, and that's when you know to add more water. So just get your brush nice and wet, and like just dab a couple times, just to get a lot of the droplets off here. But you can see that's still, see on my finger, that's still pretty wet. So I've got my brush nice and wet. And let's start with, let's do a line. So I'll start with a nice dark blue so you can see it. So I'm just going to pick up some blue and I usually bring it over to my 
palette. Let me bring this over and show you. I've got some blue here, and I'm just going to work it over here and add more water as I see fit to keep it nice and inky. Okay. So I've got a lot of nice blue on there. Now, I'm just going to work off of the point. We're just going to do lines, and this is just going to be a practice. I'm going to want you to do these lines over and over and over again to get used to the feel of the brush and um, you know how much pressure you need to apply to get a certain thickness of line, and that's just going to take practice. So just working off the tip, you're just going to apply the tip to the paper, and you're just going to... And I use my pinky, by the way, to kind of ground my hand rather than just doing it all the way up. This kind of helps me ground my hand and, and helps me keep going in a straight line or to follow the pattern I want to go in. So I'm just going to put the tip to the paper and just without any pressure, I'm just going to drag. And you see I get a pretty good consistent line. Whoops. And just go all the way across. Okay, so just practice those a lot. Now I'm picking up a little bit more water and a little paint. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you apply a little bit of pressure. The more pressure you apply, the thicker your line is going to be. So here's my nice thin line. Now I'm going to apply more pressure and see what happens. I get a nice thick line. And see, I had enough paint in my brush that it keeps the paint flowing off the bristles. I'm going to pick up a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more blue. So you'll want to practice those a lot. Practice thin lines, practice thicker lines, and you can get everything in between too, depending on the size of your brush. Now, if I had a big brush, for instance, I mean, look at this watercolor brush. This, you can just imagine the thick line you can get with that. So the size of your brush it will determine how thick you'll be able to get your line. So let me pick up a little bit more water and paint. And now this one, I'm going to make it thick, or excuse me, I'll start out with thin and then thick and then back to thin. And by doing that, or to do that, I'm going to start at the point again, just on the point of my brush and using my pinky to ground me, and I'm just going to pull thinly, and I'm going to apply pressure. There's the thickness. And now I'm just very gently going to pull the brush back up to the point, and then keep going. And if I push down again, those bristles splay out there, and it makes it thick again. And then I pull up again, and there's the point again. So you can see thin to thick to thin to thick to thin. And it was all depending on how much pressure. Pushing on the brush to make the bristles splay out and then slowly pulling it back up to that point. And that just takes practice to do that. So just, I would sit when I was learning and I would just do pages. Um, and a cute little tip, instead of using watercolor paper, sometimes to do all these practice lines, I would get a brown grocery bag a cup of water and my brush and I would use the grocery bag as like watercolor paper because it would it would wet the paper in the same way and I would be able to practice and then the paper would dry and I could just do it again. It's not perfect but it's a it was a fun way to just do these repeating exercises without using a lot of watercolor paper. So I'm gonna get a little bit more water on here. And so you can already tell this is going to be your basis for lots of your leaves and your petals. Almost everything you're going to create is going to involve a little bit of pressure, more pressure. Relieving the pressure, coming back to the tip. And look at that. There's a little strappy leaf just by doing that one, that one action. I mean, if you cut this off right here, you've got a long strappy leaf right there. And if you take one of these, just one stroke like that, pick up some other paint, and do another one right side by side, look what you got, a nice leaf. And you can make, you can keep going, go on the other side and make it wider. And that's, so you can tell by what I'm doing here, this is that basic stroke combined with more of the same to make a bigger leaf, just one stroke to make a small leaf. 
And let me show you something else. You take that same stroke. But change the color. So you're pushing, pressure, getting those bristles to splay out and then coming up to the point. And now, because you changed the color, what was a leaf shape now can become a petal shape. So that one action of just up on the point, applying pressure, back up on the point, can be used for lines, thick, thin. This is actually how you do ribbon also. Um, strappy leaves, fat leaves, petals. It's all going to be a matter of applying pressure and then coming up to a point. Applying pressure and then up to a point. Then you can fill in. And that's it. It's that easy. Now, I would recommend you just practice these a lot. Just keep doing these strokes, all different sizes. You're pushing, you're pulling up. Up on the point, push, pull back up on the point. Just keep doing them. Push down, up on the point. You can fill in. Just keep doing these. Just do pages of them. It's practice. You can do long and strappy. You can do fat leaves. It's really just a matter of getting comfortable with that pushing and then coming back up to the point. And that's why it's important to have a good brush that has a point. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you've got a brush that is an older brush, let me see if I've got one here to show you. Okay. I mean, look at this brush. It's all splayed out. It's not, there's no chiseled edge anymore. I am not going to be able to get these points with this kind of a, a brush. So you want to make sure you're using a nice brush that has either a nice point or a chiseled edge. So that's doing this with a round brush. Let me show you. Okay, here's an angle brush. This is a half inch angle brush, and it's called that because, well, it's obvious, that's an angle. Still has a nice chiseled edge. This is what we call that. See how nice and the difference, look at the difference. This has lost its chiseled edge. It used to be like that, but it's years old. This has a nice chiseled edge. So if I get that wet and pick up some color, okay, by just keeping it on the chiseled edge, and I'm not going to do this. Pretend this is the paper. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to lay this flat to the paper, but hardly any pressure. And I'm just going to, again, use my pinky as a uh, grounding tool. And I'm just going to pull and see how I can get a nice skinny line. Hardly any pressure. And like I said before, this just takes a lot of practice because you'll know how much pressure. People always say, well, how much pressure do I need to apply? You won't know until you're actually doing it. You you know, when you'll know it. If you're applying, if you're doing this line and you realize, okay, well, I want a thicker line than that, then you know you gotta apply more pressure. See now the line's thicker. And then back up to the point, push back down to make the line thicker, back up to a point, and that's how you get that thick thin line. Now petals. Just like we did with the round brush, it's a matter of pushing, let those bristles spread out, and then pulling back up to the chiseled edge. And you can leave it at that, or if you want it thicker, just come back up on the other side. So you're pushing, and then coming back up to the chiseled edge. And again, same thing. The bigger your brush, the larger your petals are going to be. So just start practicing all of those and just keep doing them over and over again. And let me show you. Let's go on to one more brush. So that was an angle brush. So we've done a round brush, an angle brush, and I've got a dagger brush. And the dagger brush is a little bit different than the angle brush in that you can see the, the angle is much more 
pronounced than on this brush. So what this does, because of the mere shape of it, it, it kind of gives you a head start at leaves and, and such because it's already got that shape to it. So I'm going to pick up some water and paint. And again, I can still do my lines, my skinny line, apply pressure, fat line, no pressure, bring it back up to the point, skinny line again. So you can still get, with all these brushes, we got that same look. And it's all a matter of pressure. And pick up some more paint. Now to do leaves. Because this brush is already angled, I mean, it already looks like the shape of a leaf. So I'm really just going to lay it down and pull it towards me and then pick it up. And see what it does? I mean, there's your leaf already because of the shape. Same thing. Do it again. Pull it towards you. Pick up some more paint. And you can make bigger leaves. So if I push, pull it towards me, bring it back up to the point, I can leave it at that. Or I can come on the other side, push, bring it up to a point. You can fill in if you want. You don't have to. Leaving some, let me show you something. With watercolor, I paint in acrylics also. With acrylics, you will base coat. Then I would come back and highlight with a lighter color on one side. Um, shade with a darker color on the other and that's how I get my highlighting and shading. With watercolor you don't do that. With watercolor you're going to use the white paper as your highlight. So for instance if I did a leaf, I'll do one here, push, apply pressure and then come up to the chiseled edge again in the point. Need some more paint. Push, apply pressure, up to the chiseled edge and I can leave that white in there because it will give it just a little bit of a highlight. Oh, let me get a point back up there. It'll give it a little bit of a highlight, and you can leave it there. That's perfectly fine. But you can do all the same strokes with these three brushes now that I've shown you, and it's they're all done the same way. I'll do it again. Let me move this up to make sure you guys can see. Yeah. So you're going to, no pressure, it's right on the point, apply pressure, and that spreads the bristles, and then back up to no pressure. You're back up on the point. And then just practice doing those. Thick, thin, thick, thin, leaves of all different sizes. In the beginning, you're going to be looking at your paper going, oh my gosh, these are terrible, but trust me, you will get the hang of it. It just takes practice. And just remember to have fun while you're practicing. Art is fun. Remember that. Use different colors to keep it exciting and not so boring. Um, but just start practicing these, and then I'm going to come back in the next video. I'm going to show you how to put these together and create some beautiful flowers.